Hey everyone, this is Lara here again to do another book review of uh, The Serpent Shadow by Rick Riordan. This is the third and final book in the King Chronicles trilogy. Obviously, this is the trilogy. The third book would be presumed to be the final one. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't read the other books in the series, uh, The Red Pyramid and The Throne of Fire, don't watch this video unless you want to be spoiled. I'll try not to give too much away. This continues Carter and Sadie Kane's adventures after the Throne of Fire when they find out that its apophis is trying to just spread chaos and destroy the whole world essentially and they've got to try to stop it and they also want to save one of their godly friends who sacrificed uh, himself for them in the second book and they want to try to find a way to save their friend Walt. Uh, who they found out is going to be dead very soon of an ancient Egyptian curse. Uh, when I first read The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan, I, I, had, I had originally, I had read the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, and I liked that a lot. I thought it wasn't as good as Harry Potter, but I mean, what could be? Uh, I checked out The Red Pyramid, and I loved it. I gave it a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads, I think. It was just... I don't know what it was, it just captivated me so much, it was so different, and I liked learning a bit more about um, Egyptian mythology and, and history and that kind of thing. Um, Rick Riordan definitely makes education fun, I think. Um, and I love that book, I love the characters and everything, like the introduction of what was going to happen. Oh man, this is great. Then last year, Throne of Fire came around, and while I still really like that one, I think I only gave it a 4 out of 5. It just wasn't, I was kind of losing interest. I don't know if it was because I was too old or something weird like that, because I, I still like to read a lot of middle grade books. But it was kind of like the in the introduction and the setup in book one, I liked more than what actually ended up happening. And the same thing happened for me in this one a little bit. I, learned, I would give it, this book also, a 4 out of 5. Um, I don't know. It's, I still like the book. I still like Carter and Sadie, and I like a lot of the other characters. But it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't as amazing as I guess I was expecting after the first book. And I don't know why that is. Because it's very, it's definitely, Rick Reardon definitely knows how to have detail for to keep uh, younger readers attention I mean especially younger boys with possibly shorter attention spans because he definitely keeps all the action and and fun stuff going throughout the books but I don't know I guess you can't say I was like really sick or tired of it maybe that I, I moved on from that or I don't know I, I guess I can't find some deep meaning for this um the romantic relationships in this book were interesting to say the least, specifically one of them. Uh, Sadie Kane, who you have to remember, is only 13 years old at this point and was left in the second book dealing with a love triangle that is kind of doomed on both sides. She's torn between two guys, but in reality, she technically can't have either of them because one of them is the Egyptian god of death, Anubis, who can't be with her. And then the other one is with the fellow magician, Walt, who is very shortly going to die of uh, this ancient Egyptian curse that was on his family. So, I mean, both of these boys like her. She likes both of them. And what is she going to do? And in this book, too, it was like there was no closer to coming up with a solution. Like, what, is she just going to be alone or what? And I have to say this, the, the solution was very, um, it was different. It was, I, I won't give it away, but just be prepared. I guess there were hints of it in the book, like what was going to happen. And I shouldn't have been surprised. I'm just like, I thought it was so bizarre and just really kind of stretching things to give her a happy ending and weird to say the least. Um, yeah, I don't want to really go into that anymore, especially because I'm running out of time here, but um, I do, if you like Rick Reardon, 
um, any of his books, and you're sure to like this one too, uh, but obviously read the, the first books in this series before you read the last one, because that wouldn't make any sense, but uh, it's going to be a 4 out of 5 for The Serpent's Shadow. It was a really good book, but I don't know, I think, I think I'm kind of moving on from this, and it, kind of sad because I've always liked Rick Riordan's books and I definitely like I still want to read The Mark of Athena the last one in the Heroes of Olympus series the one like the, the actual sequel to the Percy Jackson series and I I hope I don't end up having the same reaction to that I hope I'm still able to really love that one well we'll find out this fall I guess when the book comes out see you guys in my next video